Oh, good morning, Lionhearts. What are you doing in my shower? It's another beautiful day in Los Angeles. It's 4.30 a.m. and I have to get ready to go to work. I don't know what this day is going to have in store. All I know is they specified in my emails about five times, leave your camera in your car, leave your phone in your car. Um, if it changes, we'll let you know. So sometimes you work for some really top secret things and I have no idea when that's going to be and today's one of those days. So we'll see how the day unfolds together. I, uh, like I mentioned before, yesterday, I actually uh, vlogged something for you yesterday just in case I can't vlog today. But I have a weird feeling that I'll be done early enough that I might be able to vlog over there. There's something actually that I've wanted to see in Silmar, so we'll see how the day unfolds together. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now! Pshh! I know this isn't the greatest uh, vision of Jaw first thing in the morning, but I wanted you to see him before we take off. He's out for his morning pee and walk. Well, that is old school. Look at this water machine. Cool. Dude, this was like the best case possible scenario. Um, I showed up. My call time today was 6. What happened was, yesterday, uh... A guy who's cast me and stuff before asked me if I would do background. He said there were only going to be like four background today, and it was pretty good rate. And I'm getting my surgery, so I didn't know when I'm going to be able to work again. So I was like, "Yeah, I'll do it." So I show up today, and uh, they say I can't tell you what we were filming, but it was taking place in a fitness center, a gym. So they put me on a treadmill, and um, they're just like, "Do your thing, do whatever you want. You can walk, you can do whatever." So. I never use treadmills because I never go to the gyms. I always go outside, you guys know that. So um, I was looking around and they have one of those programs where you can pick like South Australia or New Zealand or Germany or whatever and you can pick different points in the country and you can hike through it or, or whatever. And uh, so I set it on Germany. Actually I was alternating like four or five different countries while I was doing it but I set the rate at like... Um, like a 10 mile run and I just started running. I was like, I'll do it till I wear out. I ended up running for a half an hour straight until they're like, okay, you can, uh, you guys can take a break. We're gonna have an, ex they're like doing a camera setup or whatever, so. Took a break while they were doing the camera setup. Took about a two minute break and then started back up again, ran for another five minutes straight and then they walked over and they said, you guys are done. So I showed up at 6 a.m. I'm wrapped at 8 a.m., got a 35 minute solid run in. I feel great. Let the day begin. Generally, it is not acceptable or it is not recommended for someone who's trying to feature and do commercials and stuff like that to do background work, but times are tough right now. This is a slow time of the year and uh, I need every dollar I can get, so. Sometimes you have to do things like this to uh, get by. You gotta pay your dues, and sometimes paying your dues takes forever. I do feel as your uh, resident Hollywood correspondent and vlogger uh, to tell you why the common theory is to not do background work as an actor. Um, the reality or the reason that they say not to do it is they say if you submit for jobs like that, then the casting directors will get to know your face as only a background actor and they won't they won't see you as anything else, so they won't cast you as anything else and they won't call you in as anything else. But this was a little different for me today because it was actually somebody I knew, so they were kind of hooking me up as a favor. Um, they need, this was kind of a last minute casting and so that's why I did it. As I was driving to what we're gonna vlog today, I drove past this and I couldn't believe what I was seeing and now you guys cannot believe it too. And because of what we're vlogging today, this is like a block away from our location and it's so fitting because the real name of one of the stars in the movie that we're covering today, her real name was Myla Nermi, also known as Vampira. Well, one can make many accusations about how Ed Wood made movies and the kind of movies he made, but one thing that you can never take away from the guy is he never missed an opportunity when he could see a chance to do it. And 
where we're going today is no exception. In fact, maybe it's the most important one because Ed never knew when he was going to have money. He never knew when he was going to have somebody to finance a movie. So he just had to take the opportunities, like I said, as he saw them come up. And one of the greatest opportunities he ever made was shortly before Bela Lugosi died. And apparently Ed probably saw this coming. He filmed the last footage of Bela Lugosi. No audio. No nothing. It's just a short one minute scene in front of a house. And he turned this, he birthed this into a final movie for Bela. Now this was also what is widely considered to be the worst movie of all time. But who cares? This was actually Tor Johnson's house. And this was the house that they used. You saw Bela come walking out that front door, grieving over his wife, and he walked straight out here, right there where that yellow, those yellow flowers are, and he picks that flower right off there. With her own hands, became nothing more than the lost roses of her cheeks. And then we see him progress to walk. We see him walk out of frame over here and he supposedly gets hit by a car, but how cool is that? This is the very last location that Bela Lugosi would have filmed at. And like I said, this was actually Tor Johnson's house. Tor Johnson ends up starring in Plan 9 as well. He is the cop who ends up dying and gets buried and then rises from the grave. And he was also um, a world-famous Swedish wrestler. He, um, they ended up using his face to make many, many Halloween masks. In fact, it was like the best-selling Halloween mask of all time there for a while. And you can see it in um, Mad Max. Mel Gibson wears the Tor Johnson mask. And uh, thank God for Tor letting him use this house because they had no budget. But I just had to come see it since I was in Silmar today. And I, like I told you guys, I've been wanting to come see this for a while. And uh, today was just the day. I loved... This was actually the first Ed Wood movie I ever saw. And I was already a Bela Lugosi fan, so... It was just a perfect marriage. But it would have all happened right there. Bela would have walked out of that front door right there. The grief of his wife's death became greater and greater agony. Came down the steps, walked right here to where that bucket is. Was now only a covering for her dead body. Stopped, reflected. He would have pulled a flower off that little bush right there, and that's so cool, whoever lives here, I hope that's the reason they kept it, that they're an Ed Wood fan, and the, or a Bela fan, and they kept that there, but that's exactly he pulls that off on camera. It looks white because it's a black and white movie. The ever beautiful flowers she had planted. And then we see him drop the flower and he walks off camera. Confused by his great loss, the old man left that home never to return again. So cool. Really interesting mailbox. Really interesting. I do realize that I often get excited about like very little things, but that's kind of what vlogging is all about, I guess, is finding like the little things that excite you and showing everybody else. But man, to, you know, j to see the house is super cool. And that's, man, it's like, it's like being on holy ground. But to see that that rose bush was still there, that was so cool. That's like, man, that's the kind of stuff that you want to see when you come to locations like this. Ah, uh, well, bummer. I thought because I got done early today, this would be a great day to bring Ja here to the park and they've got the sprinklers going. It's a mess. There's a few dogs, so we're gonna see if we can play anyway. Well, on the way back from working, I got a phone call from the hospital about, uh, they had like, like a 15 minutes worth of questions for me 
and um, basically telling me all the things that I would have found out at my anesthesiologist appointment had I known about it. And I, I actually told the lady, I was like, yeah, I um, I didn't even know about the appointment until um, come on, come over here. I just got soaked by the sprinkler big time. I said, I didn't even know about the appointment until I got some paperwork they handed me and I saw that the uh, appointment was uh, like five hours before when I was looking at it. And she goes, so you didn't go? And I go, I didn't know about it. I said, the lady at the office told me that sometimes those are scheduled too late to let the patient know and that it was no big deal that I didn't go. What do you think about that? She goes, yeah, that's not correct. But the anesthesiologist will meet with you before and that's why I'm asking all these questions now, so. Bummer. Yeah, that uh, that oscillating head when I was filming this flipped around and just gunned me right in the back of the head and the back. So you can probably see the water on the back of my shirt here. Well, I must have lost a significant amount of weight since the last time we were regularly going to the dog park because we ran into a girl there that uh, John I know and she saw me there for a few minutes and didn't even recognize me until I came, walked up to the table she was at and then she finally realized who I was. I'm trying to give him as much time outside today as I can because basically the game plan for tomorrow is that I'm not allowed to have anything to eat after midnight tonight and I have to be at the hospital at 3.30 tomorrow and then they're, I've, that's like two hours before the surgery, then they're gonna do the surgery, so I'm basically not gonna get out until like 10 o'clock at night, so. He's gonna go over to Pollyanna's house and hang out. Uh-oh, he heard that name. Slugbug. Are you tripping out yet? Well, good night, gang. Thanks for coming and watching Days with Jordan the Lion today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't seen Plan 9 from Outer Space, sit back and give it a watch sometime. It's unlike anything you've ever seen before. Um, I'm thinking maybe tomorrow I will... Well, actually, today. When you're watching this, it'll be today. I think I'll do a live uh, chat before I go to the hospital. So, stay tuned for that. Have a great day, and uh, from your old pal Jordan the Lion and the uh, monster on the floor sucking down the water. Can you hear him? Good night.